Hello, thank you so much for jumping on here to join me for this video. I'm so thankful that you're here, that you're engaging and you're following along with our channel and with everything that the Lord is doing here. I wanna encourage you to subscribe and hit the button below so you can follow along to get more content like this. I also wanna encourage you to like and comment down below as the video goes along because I wanna hear from you. And lastly, if this video blesses you, share it on your social media platforms in a text with a friend so that they could be blessed by this as well. Thanks so much. Well, today, today I want to talk to you about a trance that I had. I had a trance. I was caught up into a trance recently on July 11th that really marked me. It shook me. It honestly bewildered me. It perplexed me. And I want to open up this trance and what I believe is a word from the Lord for this hour, for this season, for this moment. And uh, I believe that this will bless you, this encounter, but also this word that the Lord has really burdened me with uh, for this generation, for this moment. So on July 11th, as I said, in the afternoon, I was in a time of study and prayer in my home office, and I was reading the book of Romans, and I love to just binge read. I love to open up the word sometimes and just read mass quantity, and that's what I was setting out to do that day. So I open up my Bible. I'm reading uh, the book of Romans, I get to about chapter 9, and suddenly the deep, dark cloud of God's mystery overshadowed me, and I felt myself falling into an uncontrollable sleep. I could not climb out of it, even if I wanted to, and I was l sitting in my chair, and the only way I can explain it is it was asleep, but I was awake. I was asleep, but I was awake. I felt the chair, I, I was aware of all my faculties, but I went into that deep, dark cloud of mystery, the mystery of God, and I found myself in what people would refer to as a trance. And as I'm sitting in that chair, I'm asleep, but I'm awake, and I'm in this trance state, suddenly before me in this dark room, there was this ominous presence of this woman, this woman with very exaggerated curves of a woman, very exaggerated breasts, exaggerated hips, and she was a dark spirit, and she was in this room looking at me kind of in, with this seductive nature. And I was bewildered. What am I beholding right now? What is happening? What's transpiring before my eyes? And suddenly, I heard an, a voice of an unknown woman. And her and this other woman, this dark spirit, were conversing together as they were looking at an image of the reproductive system of a woman, of the menstrual cycle, of this whole process of a woman and they're looking at it they're conspiring they're plotting they're scheming and it was dark and suddenly the trance shifted and I found this um, unknown being I, I know it to be an angel had his arm around the arm of another man and he pushed this man forward to me and this man was standing very proud and courageous with his arms crossed um, in front of me and the, the voice of this angel said, have you met David or have you considered King David? And then suddenly I found myself out of the trance and I came out of it and I came to. And to be quite honest, I was very perplexed. I was bewildered by the vision that I had. Honestly, I did not know or understand at all what I saw. I was, I was confused. I felt honestly ill and sick in my body. And it honestly took me leaning into the Holy Spirit for him to illuminate the wisdom and revelation pertaining to this trance and this encounter. And through, uh, you know, the week following through in study and prayer, I came to understand that this dark spirit, this woman that I had encountered in this trance was the ancient goddess Asherah. And the voice of the unknown woman that she was conversing with was Jezebel. And that, you know, all around this thing of the reproductive system of a woman. And I realized that I had encountered Asherah. Now, Asherah is a demonic principality spirit or an enchantress spirit who shadows, has a shadow mask of a goddess in ancient culture, in Canaanite culture, in all the ancient cultures of those days back then. She was a goddess known as Asherah or Ishtar uh, that was a demonic principality spirit. As Paul said, when the, the worship of idols is really the worship of demons, the partnership of demons. 
So in ancient culture, can I tell you a little bit about Ashra? She's an enchantress spirit. In ancient culture, she was the sexual goddess. She was the destroyer of family and marriage, and she was the producer of sexual confusion. She took sex out of the context of marriage. She was wicked. There was a there were honestly wicked, gross sexual acts that were regularly performed in this goddess's temples. And she was the prostitute goddess and the word, so she literally was the goddess for prostitutes. And there were prostitutes in her temple. And the word for prostitute in that ancient language is literally porne, which is where we get the word porn or pornography. And there's even old tablets, as I studied more, there's even old tablets from her temples that are pornographic in nature. I'm telling you another more stuff about this enchantress demonic spirit is she was the goddess of gender transition. She was um, the goddess that was known to have the power to make a woman masculine and a man feminine. She could turn a woman into a man and a man into a woman is what it was said in ancient writings. She was the occult goddess. So all the occult, witchcraft, divination, necromancy, all these forms of demonic, really, um, fallen spirit, fallen angel activities, she was the goddess of those things. And another aspect of her is she was the goddess of taverns. So under her hand or her regime is all intoxicating substances and these wicked things that, have, that you know, do so much damage to people. Even, can I tell you that her festivals were in the month of June. Her festivals, her temple festivals were celebrated in the month of June. So what I want to point out, oh, another aspect is, can I tell you that Asherah was the puppeteer to the puppet Jezebel? Jezebel was a puppet in the hands of the puppeteer Asherah. Really, the the shadow thing, government behind the government of Jezebel is Asherah. And what I, I and I'm telling you, this is time. It's time for this thing to be exposed in America because, it, just in ancient times. All of her operations, so it is today in America and in in Western culture. And I'm telling you, she has worked to cast a spell of enchantment over this generation. She has seduced this generation with her seductions. And I'm telling you that, I mean, it's it's obvious. It's just easy to point out ever since the 1960s, if you're alive, if you have a pulse, unfortunately, everybody in this generation has been affected by Asherah in her prostitute bed. Every single person in this generation in Western culture, we have been bit by pornography. We have been bit by sexual perversion, by STDs, by LGBT gender confusion, by sexual trauma, by abortion, by witchcraft, divination, Jezebel, Python. And this is just to name a few of the minion spirits that operate under her power is a principality spirit. But in the, in the trance, I didn't just see her. Then an angel presented David to me. And who's David? David is the beloved of God. He was an ancient king during those ancient times. He was a king, a priest, and a warrior who was fierce. He was fiercely devoted to God and to the household of Israel. He was a defender and a protector of the household of Israel. He was a man, it was said, that was after God's own heart. But here's the thing. I wonder about that because David, he wasn't perfect he was just like us. He was a flawed man. He had issues. He honestly didn't have the cleanest track record. He was violent. There was blood on his hands. He had a, a spit of sexual immorality. So what made him a man after God's own heart? Like I began to think about that. What was it that made David a man after God's own heart? Can I tell you what it was? He was the only king in all of the history of Israel that did not bow a knee to the ancient false gods of the land. He was the only king throughout all of history. See, there were some kings, uh, you know, uh, Josiah and different ones that try, reverted back from apostasy. But can I tell you that David was the only king out of all of them that never bowed a knee to Baal. He never bowed a knee to Asherah or to Moloch and these false gods of the land. He never bowed a knee because even his predecessor, Saul, King Saul, failed in this area because, well, maybe he didn't build an actual pole to Asherah, to this false goddess. He did consult with her and go into her bed. He he uh, consulted with diviners and divination, and he practiced necromancy. So he even wasn't clean in this area. Only David was a man after God's own heart. He was unpolluted in his pure and undivided devotion to God and the first commandment. 
David was fierce to protect the first commandment. So much so that the primary beautiful thing that he did, this is the greatest act in David's entire kingship, is he carried the Ark of the Covenant, the very presence of God. He brought it into the household of Israel. He carried it in. He ushered it in with exuberant praise. He carried in the Ark into the household of God. So he was a warrior. He was a king. He was a priest. And he never forsook his one true true God. Although he was bit by Asherah, he did, just like all of us in this generation, he was bit by Asherah. He fell into sexual sin. He was bit by that prostitute's bed. But here's the thing. He did not bow to her. And even though he was bit by her, he did not bow to her. And he repented, and he was restored by God. He repented of his sexual immorality, his sexual sin, and he was restored by God and, and, and was uh, maintained that place of authority of kingship as a warrior and as a priest. And here's the word that I sense from the Lord from this trance. I'm telling you that in this hour, God is exposing con- and confronting the ancient principality demon of Asherah. I'm telling you the wicked sex goddess will be found out and judged in the coming days. The axe is going to be taken to the very root of her tree, of her Asherah pole. I'm telling you that I believe it. Can you envision it? Can you picture the day when the porn industry will cease to be? Can you picture the day when human trafficking will be exposed and eradicated? Can you picture the day when abortion in every single state across this land will be shut down and and broken and have its power broken? I can picture that day. It's time for the axe to be taken to the very root of her tree. I'm telling you, the Asherah trees that have been sprung up across all across this land will be torn down. And I believe that a primary thing that it's going to be torn down by is by mighty men of valor like David. I'm telling you that Davids are arising. This is the hour for households. This is the hour for families. This is the hour for men and women and children to arise. God is raising up mighty women in this hour, Deborah's and Esther's that are tearing down and confronting the idols in the land. And I'm telling you that in that same spirit, there's also a whole army of children arising with the spirit of Elijah. And in that same spirit, God is saying that it's time for men to arise, for mighty men of valor to arise like David's. And I'm telling you, these Davids that are arising are going to carry the heart of David that will operate in that threefold way as a king, is a priest and is a warrior. And where? In their households. God's raising up Davids in the households all across America and Western culture to take back their rightful authority and their position in their homes. I'm telling you as as a king that what that means is they're going to carry a sensitivity and a hearing ear to the presence and the voice of God for governmental building in their home. God, where the culture and demonic spirits in Asherah has been trying to demasculate men and take back their um, authority and, and snatch their authority out of their home or tell them that their role is irre- or is replaceable, I'm here to tell you that it is irreplaceable. And God is going to raise them up as kings in their home to build governmentally. They're going to walk in a supernatural wisdom and revelation And they're going to have unique insights and blueprints to build in their homes, to build the kingdom of God in their homes. And secondly, I see them, they're going to walk as priests, and they're going to walk like David, who he had a minstrel and psalmist anointing, and he led the initiative to start 24-7 prayer and worship. And not only that, but he's the one, again, that carried in the ark of the presence of God into the household of Israel. And I believe just like that with David, God is raising up men in this hour that'll say, not on my watch, as we're going to take a stand and we're going to carry the ark of God into our homes. We're not content with just having the ark of God in the Sunday morning gathering or in the corporate gathering expressions of the church. We're done with the con- just doing the conference and event Christianity. We're going to carry the ark of Jesus, the ark of the very presence and glory of God into our very homes into our very houses, and our households are going to be filled with exuberant praise. And I believe, lastly, they're going to carry a courageous warrior heart. These ones that are arising are going to have a courageous warrior heart like David, where they will not only be anointed with wisdom to build, but they will be anointed with a courageous warrior spirit to take ground and advance the kingdom of God. I believe that as these warriors, they're going to rise up and they're going to cast down the schemes of the enemy that are riddling the children in this generation and and that are attacking women in this generation. They'll rise up as courageous 
defenders and protectors of women and children in this hour to be a blanket of covering over their household, to be a greenhouse over their homes. And they will not bow a knee to Asherah, to Baal, or to Moloch, and they will stand up for righteousness, and they will live in their homes for the one true living God. And this is what I hear the Lord say. God says, my hand is mighty upon men in this hour. I, he says, I am cleaning hearts and renewing a right spirit in the fathers. He says that, um, that as Malachi prophesied and said that he would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, that this spirit and this message is unfolding now in this hour. I'm telling you guys, men, as men, we have been turned to other things. We have been turned to our vocations. We have been turned to our phones, to our businesses, to ministry, to perversion, to so many other things. But I'm telling you that in this hour, all across this nation and across this land, God is beginning a work of his spirit to tenderize and transform the hearts of men and to renew a right spirit within us that he would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children again, where we've been turned to everything but our households. In this hour, God is raising up Davids, and they will turn their heart to their households. I'm telling you, this is taking place all over this nation. Watch and see in the years ahead as a great, mighty family revival begins to unfold, as a renewal in the households and homes in America and Western culture begin to take place. Watch and see as houses become glory temples and tables become altars to the Lord again. Watch and see as tables become places of communion again. Because I'm telling you that God's heart is groaning for children, for women, for men, for families, for households, for the family unit. And the families have been besieged and bombarded by Baal and Asherah and Moloch. And God is saying, enough is enough. And his judgment gavel is coming down. I'm telling you that in this hour, God is looking for righteous lions who will be bold to confront and tear down the altars of Baal and the Asherah poles and the Moloch temples. It's time for David's to arise. It's time for us to slay the enemies of God. I'm telling you, it's time for Gideon's to arise like um, like Judges chapter 7 verse 20. Five, or, or was it 625? I'm sorry, chapter 6, verse 25. It says that Gideon tore down his father's altar of Baal and tore down his Asherah pole. It's time for David's to arise as fathers in their households and tear down these altars, one starting in their own households and in their own hearts, and watch and see as this tips America and tips things in this nation. It's time for men to arise. This is what I hear boldly. Like and hear so clearly, like Joshua, who stood up to false idols in the culture, and he proclaimed this, If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day. Choose for yourself today who you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers or the gods of the Amorites in this land where you are living. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Guys, it's, I'm telling you, it's time for great exposure to this demonic enchanter spirit of Asherah. And it, instead of going to all the little symptoms of Jezebel and Python and all these other things, it's time to go to the very axe to the root of the thing. And we're going to see the Asherah pole fall in this nation as men rise up as vi mighty men of valor to lead their households in the kingdom of God, to carry his ark into their, into their homes and to bring the sacraments and, the, and all the beautiful things that we've been instructed in this faith into our households. So it's time for David's to arise. It's time for Asherah to, in her filthy, wicked government to be cast down all across America. And I believe that you're uh, in the listed in this army. If you're watching this, if you're a mom, if you're a dad, you're enlisted in this great war that is taking place before us. It's time for this stuff to be exposed and cast down. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, hey, I want to encourage you. I pray that this blesses you. Let's share this thing like crazy because this message has to get out. This word has to get out to families and to households and to the body of believers. We cannot be asleep anymore. We cannot placate hell anymore. We cannot perpetuate these demonic things anymore in our homes and in our hearts. It's time for us to see this stuff cast down in our hearts, in our homes, and in this nation. 
So I, I bless you with this in Jesus' name. Rid yourself of anything that any tie and anything that you've had in your heart. I encourage you to forgive, to repent, and to renounce any any tie you've had with Asherah and close the door on these things in your own life. Close the door on the spirit of rejection and on this demonic stuff and, and let the Lord take precedence and prominence and lordship in your heart and in your home. So I bless you with this. I pray that it encourage you, encourages you today. So I want to encourage you to subscribe, hit the button below, like and comment. I want to hear from you about this word, this powerful word that the Lord is releasing. Also share it, please share, share, share. We got to get this word out. I want others to hear. This is the hour for this thing to be cast down. So share it, share it, share it. And I appreciate you so much. I'll talk to you soon. You take care.